Come on. Good morning. Welcome to Victory Church Online. So great that you're spending your Sunday with us. Uh, we want to invite you today just into the presence of God. Today we've got an incredible guest speaker, Pastor Zoran Pornovich, uh, who's come up to speak for us. And I'm so excited about the message which God has put on his heart for us. You know, as always, we will be taking communion today, so I encourage you, if you haven't prepared the emblems, to go and do that. We do want to thank the church for your incredible, generous giving over this season. It's just been such a blessing to not have that worry, uh, which some churches have, of uh, dropping finances. And we just had an incredibly faithful church. We're so appreciative of everyone who has given over this time. I really pray for you today. You know, you might be going through a situation. Maybe you need healing in your body. Uh, maybe there's things going on in your life. Maybe there's a bit of turmoil, whatever it is today. I want to pray for you, just as we start this service, that the peace of God comes to you in your circumstances and your situations today, and that you're going to be filled with joy throughout this service. Father, I thank you for every person that's watching this broadcast. I thank you, but Lord, you know them by name. I pray in the room that they're in right now, that the peace and the presence of God would be there. I pray over everything else that's going on, but Lord, they would deeply feel your love, a connection with you, and that Lord, you're moving in their life. I pray for everyone that's sick today. I pray, Father, for your healing power to go and heal them of every sickness and every disease. And Lord, I pray for those that are lonely, that feel isolated, that Father, you would be there with them, that Lord, even people would reach out, and that Lord, they would have the ability to reach out to others around them in jesus name amen hey we're going to worship this morning why don't you join us i love you lord oh your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head And I will sing Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful So, so Of God. And all my life, 
have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so As the walls come down, oh creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Swing wide, swing wide, oh you go up as the walls come down, oh creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound, oh his children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God, his name is Jesus, swing wide, oh swing wide, oh you hear Come down, oh creation Everything with breath, repeat the sound Oh creation, clean hands, pure hearts Good grace, good God, His name is Jesus So swing wide, and swing wide Oh you heavens, let the praise go up This the walls come down
Hi there, my name's Steve and it's my pleasure to lead us in communion today. Communion provides us with that regular opportunity to remember and reaffirm that we are washed. Our heart is cleansed by the blood of Jesus, by his death on the cross. I am forgiven, I am washed, I am set free. Okay, we'll get the ultimate wash today. Let's go. Woohoo! I love washing the car. It's one of life's great pleasures, washing the car. I hope you can hear me in here as we go through the car wash. Now, I'm also, if you don't know, I'm also the chaplain at Victory Christian College. And uh, this term for my remote chapel videos, we've, we've been through the car wash. So anyone who's seen my chapel videos, uh, yes, I'm recycling an illustration today with a bit of a, bit of a different message. Uh, for that chapel video, uh, I wanted to make the car nice and dirty. So I took my youngest daughter, Ada, and in a lunch break, we went into the bush near our place and looked for the, the biggest, dirtiest, deepest, muddiest puddle we could find and, and went ripped through it a few times, had some adventurous fun. Um, but unfortunately, I got the car bogged. Check out the picture right here. Uh-huh, not my most clever moment, but it got the car nice and muddy uh, for the before shot for the chapel video. It was great to bring it to the car wash and, and get it all clean. Uh, there's nothing like that feeling of a clean car. Whenever I've washed the car, my wife, my good wife Sheridan and I have this bit of banter. We're driving along and I say, oh, hun, doesn't the car feel good? Doesn't, isn't it humming? Isn't it just running so nicely now, hun? And she has that classic get wife eye roll moment. Yes, Steve. Um, as I tell her how, how well the car's running because it's been washed. Um, babe, I'm going on tape once and for all right now to say and to admit, no, the car does not run any better mechanically when it's been washed. There you go, I've said it. No, if you want the car to run well, you want it to hum along, you gotta lift the bonnet, you gotta go on the inside. And that's where we get back to Jesus and communion. Jesus is like the, the ultimate mechanic who can get under the bonnet and fix our engine, our heart problem. Um, actually, that's a bit of a poor illustration. He's not the ultimate mechanic. Jesus is like the ultimate automotive engineer who actually created the car, who knows it through and through, and, and who loves his creation. And he knows how to get in there and fix. And he doesn't just know how to fix the problem, my broken life because of sin. Jesus became the once and for all sacrifice. He sacrificed himself on the cross to fix our broken lives, that we might be forgiven and set free and cleansed and have that right relationship restored with God. As you prepare yourself for communion today, I'd like to read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. And the imagery here in Hebrews is that Old Testament way of that people got their lives washed of sin, cleansed and forgiven from, for, from sin. It's the Old Testament temple. Oh, awesome, love it. Hope you can hear me. The Old Testament temple where animals were slaughtered, blood was sprinkled at the temple by the priests for the forgiveness of the people's sin. But listen to these words in Hebrews about Jesus as you prepare your heart. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from, the, from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Our hearts are cleansed. We are washed with pure water. I love those words. I love communion. It's that regular opportunity to remember what Jesus did, to reaffirm that I am forgiven. I am washed clean because of his sacrifice. We're encouraged at the communion table to examine ourselves. 
And in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To finish up, before we take the elements, are you weary at the moment? I know a lot of us are weary. It's been a strange old year. Um, coming out of term three, another term of remote learning, if you've got kids. Um, but we're all been, we've been doing it a bit tough this year. Are you weary? That I, I would invite you at this time of communion to remember Jesus, remember his death, remember that life and forgiveness and cleansing comes through him. He is where we put our hope for life that is truly life. Are you weary? Then remember these words in Isaiah. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Put your hope in Jesus and you will renew your strength. Take the, the, the bread and the juice. Remember Jesus' body, his blood given for you on the cross. Bless you, church. Car wash is finished. I love that cleansing feeling. But even more so, I love that clean heart feeling that Jesus has bought for us on the cross. Bless you, church. My name is Steph and I was born in Bendigo. My name's Phil, Phil Bag, and I was born in Salford, UK, which is a twin city of Manchester. Most people know it as Manchester. Cats or dogs? Definitely dogs. Cats or dogs? Oh, cats, absolutely. What car did I learn to drive in? Well, I'd learned to drive sort of at about the age of 13 or 14. I actually don't know. Can you say a manual one? In a little Hillman Minx that was back home, but... It's like a... <laughs> I don't really know. Over here it was a V-dub, a 64 V-dub pasty, you know. Okay, what was the question you get? Pasty. It was not fun. What's the one thing my dad or mum always said to me? Um. Oh, wow, Philip, don't do that. It'll only end badly. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing like wisdom issue or anything like that. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> um, if I've ever had a nickname, yes, there's a few. It's mainly Steph, or there's been Stefan, Steffi, and Steffels. I think that's about it. I've had a few, but mostly the one that stuck with me is Boggy Man. Do I always put my purse in the same spot at home? Oh, Lord, I wish. Why can't I do it? <laughs> I just wish. No. No, because I'm always losing it. Whoops. Where would be my dream retirement house? That's a tricky one because I love the bush and I love the coast, but I think it would be the bush. Or my dream retirement place would be anywhere on the beach. Love the beach. A log cabin on 10 acres in the bush. Um, my favorite color is blue. That's a tricky one. I think purple because it's the colour of manifestation and to me it makes things happen. In one sentence, shopping for clothes in three hours would be um, around in circles really. Describe in one sentence what shopping for clothes in three hours would be for me. Purgatory, not one sentence, one word, purgatory. Do you want to know why? I mean, oh, yeah. The best advice I've ever been given is to be kind to yourself. What's the best piece of advice I've ever been given? I suppose it would be to your own self, be true. My first paid job was at KFC. What was my first job? I joined the Royal Air Force at the age of 16 as an apprentice airframe fitter. I came to know Christ by, um, well I went to a Christian school here at Victory. I came to know Christ at a very early age. My family, I grew up in a very strong Anglican family that were very heavily involved in the local church. 
And from the age of four, three or four, I was there every Sunday. And it was the usual routine of Sunday school. And, and I went to a year seven camp that Mason was on. Later on, I was in the choir and I became an altar boy. It was like a chapel service and I never, never really been to one. And that's how like, I first gave my life to God. That's where I had my, first, uh, my salvation. And an incense thurifer, you know, swing the, the ball, that was good. I never really kind of walked in the way of like a follower of Christ. I just kind of thought it was, oh yeah, I believe, and then that was it. Um, and that went until I was about 16-ish. And at 16, I joined the Air Force. So the next couple of years was pretty rough. And I discovered girls, beer, other things, distractions, put it that way. When I came back to God when I was 17, I was completely arrogant and angry at God for certain things that happened in my life. And at the age of 22, I migrated to Australia from the UK. And I kind of, not deliberately, but just accidentally, I suppose, drifted away from Christ, but he was always there. I knew he was always there. And just empty and lonely. And then one day, about seven or eight years ago, a friend of mine who was singing in the choir with me down at Eagle Hawk, Inglewood, sorry, um, said, I'm going to leave this choir and I'm going to start another choir at church. Would you come along and help me start it? And I said, oh, sure, yeah, but I'm not coming to church. No, no, you don't have to come to church. No. I remember it was a point of worship when I was 17. It was at youth, no guest speaker or anything like that. I just kind of raised my hand in worship because I was like, oh, I don't want anyone to like figure out that I'm not okay. <laughs> Well, that went as you'd expect. She chipped away very, very steadily and easily at me. And one day, my cousin in England, her husband was very, very ill with cancer and he was gonna die, Steve was gonna die. And this friend said to me, why don't we go into the church? Oh, why don't we go into the church and pray for your cousin's husband? And I said, I couldn't do that. I said, I can't go into a church and say, God, I don't believe in you anymore. I've had nothing to do with you, but will you please look after Steve? I couldn't do that. I just remember lifting my hand and God saying, I've never left your side. I've been here the whole time. You just never realized it. And she said, it doesn't matter whether you believe in him or not. If he can help, he will. Never forgotten that. Never will forget that. And for him to say that to me, I was like, dang, okay, someone's been there, someone's loved me throughout all of it and has seen me through the highs and the lows in life and stuff like that. So, I went into the church with this friend and we prayed and a couple of other people joined us in the choir rehearsal. And after two or three weeks, that became a regular little prayer meeting before rehearsal. Ever since that moment, when I was 17 at youth group, I've never really looked back, so yeah. Then there was a bit of a hiatus, but eventually she got me to come to church regularly. And that was around about March, seven or eight years ago. And I've been here ever since with a few tiny gaps here and there. And There'll never be another church for me. The difference Jesus has made in my life is everything. What does Christ mean to me now? When everybody else can leave you. He's everything that I was looking for. He's like, I tried to fulfill the emptiness that was inside of me for so long, but there's no one else like God. When you can lose your house, your family, your job, everything else, he will never leave you. That anything or anyone like God, God is God, God is love, God is kind, God is patient, and he was everything that I was seeking for. He's there, he's just over your shoulder. And I know that I will never ever be abandoned. When I was in the lowest of lows and the highest of highs, that he's everything that I need and he's everything like he means the world to me and he's made the biggest impact on my life. It doesn't mean I may not be poor or on the street or whatever, but I will never be on my own. That's what Christ means to me. Hello Victory 
Church, it's terrific to be with you here at Zorin, here and uh, have travelled up from Geelong to be with the college students here. And I might give the college a bit of a plug. If you've been thinking about doing the Victory Leadership College, uh, particularly for the 2021 intake, I couldn't encourage you enough to do that. And so uh, I suppose you can see Pastor Andy for that. He's doing an absolute jo wonderful job in coordinating that. Anyway, so I was traveling up here to be with the college and your pastor said, you can't just come up for college without sharing and bringing a word for the church. So that's what we've come to do. Why don't we bow in a word of prayer, get straight into it and uh, get ready, open up your hearts with a good sense of expectation as we crack open the word and uh, communicate uh, something that will build your faith, uh, particularly for these demanding times that we find ourselves in. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now. I invite you to come and inhabit and hover over your word. And I pray that all those watching on the screen right now would position their heart and their spirit in readiness to receive that which you want to be able to speak to them. This is not about me bringing something. This is everything about you, Holy Spirit. Bringing something so that your church could be strengthened, encouraged and confident in these days that we live in and centre their faith upon you and your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's draw your attention, and I don't know whether the guys uh, will be able to put this scripture up on the screen, but let's draw your attention to a prophetic word that I want to bring to the church right now from Psalm chapter 65, verse 11, reading from the NLT version. It says this, ready? Here we go. You crown, that's God, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest. God is crowning this year, 2020, as cactus as this year is, he's crowning it as a bountiful harvest. You say, Pastor Zoran, how can you say that? Wait there, ready? You crown the year with a bountiful harvest, even in the hard pathways, overflow with abundance. Even, the scripture says, the hard pathways flow with abundance. So I want to speak to you today, if I was going to pick a, a title for it, the God of the hard pathway. The God of the hard pathway. He crowns the year with bountiful harvest, even in the hard pathways. Notice, God is crowning the year, crowning the year with abundance. I want to declare to you, this year and this season of your life, a year of bounty, a year of harvest, a year of blessing, a year of favour, and a year of overflow in a very demanding, a very trying, and a very difficult time, a hard pathway. God wants to crown the year and crown this season as a year of overflow in a hard and difficult pathway. Notice he's not crowning, he's not crowning the year as a bountiful harvest in an easy pathway a comfortable pathway, a relaxed and laid back pathway. No, God is crowning his blessing and placing it on a hard pathway. God is a source of blessing, provision, answers of supernatural supply and grace in a hard pathway, in a hard pathway. And I want you to stay with me right now, tune off right now. I know it's been difficult and I know it's been demanding and I know for some people the season that we're currently living in is extremely difficult. But I want to bring a word of encouragement to you, those of you watching right now and listening. So stay with me. The Bible says in Psalm 114 verse 8 in the NLT version, who turns the rock, our God, who turns the rock into a pool of water, flint into fountain, fountains of water. That's what the scripture says. The fountain and the pool of water did not flow out of an easy place. The fountain and the pool of water in this scripture flowed out of a hard pathway, out of a hard place. The Bible says the fountain and the pool of water flowed out of rock, out of flint. Notice even here, the God of blessing and the God of 
favor and the God of bounty and the God of grace, causing water to flow, not out of an easy place, but out of solid rock, out of flint. Elijah said to Elisha, ask me what you want. And Elisha said, can you, can you imagine the audacity of Elisha? Elisha said to Elijah, I want to, I want to achieve twice as much as you have. I want double what's on your life. What did Elisha say? Oh, wow, you've asked an easy thing. Elisha, that's a comfortable request. Elisha, the pursuit of a double portion, that's an easy pathway. No, Elijah said to Elisha, what you're asking for is a hard thing. The God of the double portion was not found in a comfortable place. It was not found in an easy request. He said, man, if you want a double portion, you've asked for a hard thing. That is a difficult request, Elisha. It's amazing how much of the power and the grace and the provision and the supply of God can be found in a hard pathway, in a hard request. Do you know what? Sometimes I do ask myself, sometimes I wonder whether we ask for too many easy things. Often human nature is to choose the path of least resistance. But I'm here to tell you that during these difficult times and demanding times, God wants to break out in a big way, in a big way upon our life. And I want you to stay with me. Elisha, you didn't ask an easy thing, you've asked a difficult thing. The university student comes up to his professor and he says to his professor, is there an easier way and a quicker way that I can obtain this degree? Well, the professor looks at the student and says, hmm, depends what you want to be. Do you want to be a squash tree or do you want to be an oak tree? It takes six months to grow a squash tree and it takes a hundred years to grow an oak tree. What do you want to be, young man? It's a metaphor, think about that. My son is an arborist. He said, Dad, he said some of these trees that people plant can grow quickly and can cast a fair bit of shade over the summer that people can find shelter in. But Dad, the trees that grow the quickest are the most brittle and easy to break, but when? when a storm comes. When a storm comes, it's a test of durability. It's a test of strength. A storm will test resilience. Only then will it find out how strong a tree really is. So what do we want to be, he says. Depends what you want to be, young man. Do you want to be a squash tree that grows quickly and is brittle and broken in a time of storm? Or do you want to be a, an oak tree that's standing there a hundred years later, still looking the hurricane in the face and laughing as it blows by. What do you want to be? The longer something is, the stronger something is. The longer is the stronger. The longer and the harder something is, the stronger it is. He said, Dad, the longer it takes a tree to grow, the stronger it is. Did you know the larger is in the longer. The larger is in the longer. It's in the waiting. It's in through the trials. It's in through the testing. The larger is in the longer. Did you know it takes about 60 days for a dog to give birth to small pups? But it takes an elephant two years to give birth to a baby elephant. Well, the difference between something small and something large is the difference between 60 days and two years. So the longer something takes, often it's stronger, often it's bigger. What do we want? Do we want a small pup's dream and a small pup's destiny? Or do we want something like an elephant dream? You know what I'm saying, like a metaphor. The larger was in the longer. Sure, it took two years instead of 60 days, but it was larger. Some of you have been believing God for things for quite some time. Some of you have been through some incredible journeys. Some of you have been through some hard pathways, some difficult times, demanding times. Some of you had no idea when Jesus said in Luke 9.23, unless you pick up your cross and come follow me, you're not worthy of me. 
Well, some of you had no idea what it would mean to pick up a cross because a cross is a symbol of a hard pathway. But I don't have two pens with me. If I had two pens with me, I'd say the cross in a stationary position is a symbol of addition. But if you pick up a cross and carry it, it changes an angle. And because you pick up a cross and you carry it, it moves from a symbol of addition to a symbol of multiplication. But the cross is a symbol of a hard pathway. And in the hard pathway is God's overflowing abundance. He crowns it with bounty of blessing, provision, and grace, and supply, and promotion. Too many believers choose the least path of resistance. I know this is a tough time. It's difficult for a lot of people. But I want you to encourage you to look to God's grace. Because God's grace is sufficient for the Apostle Paul. And he says power is perfected in a hard place. Power is perfected, he said, in weakness, not in strength. So God is the God of the hard pathway. God is the God of the hard pathway. God's blessing and God's answers are in that place. Did you know one of the most expensive and valuable gems is not formed in an easy place? One of the most expensive and valuable gems, many of you would be aware of this, the diamond is formed under extreme pressure, under extreme difficulty. It's not formed in an easy place. The diamond, the most, one of the most expensive gems on this planet is formed in a hard pathway. There are some valuable things being formed in your life right now in this hard pathway. For some of you, you're, you're, be, you're developing resilience. For some of you, it's building a sense of character and a resolve in you like never before. For some of you, it's causing you to dig your roots deep down. For some of you are finding that you're finding God in a way and a form that, and, and, and a revelation of Him in a way that you've never understood on Easy Street, but on Hard Street, on Difficult Street, God can manifest Himself in a way that he, you would never have understood Him in an easy pathway. Do you know when companies are transporting their goods, when companies are transporting valuable resources, merchandise, material, and goods, they don't send their large trucks full of this stuff down a soft and sandy pathway. These big vehicles that are full of all these resources, they send these trucks and they transport them in order to get them from the warehouse to their destination. The resources have to be transported on a hard pathway, on a solid surface, on concrete, on bitumized road, on solid tar. I believe right now, I'm speaking to people prophetically right now, God's warehouse of resources, God's warehouse of answers and supply is not being transported to you down a soft and sandy soil pathway. You thought, man, can any good come out of this time that we're in now? God is using this hard pathway to transport his resources and answers. Some of you are about to break out and find God in a new way. Some of you are about to experience supernatural supply and provision and upgrade is coming. Believe me, I'm feeling prophetic about it here. Some of you, some of you thought, can anything good come of this day and this season that we're in? Just watch. Watch what's going to happen right now and even receive it. God is transporting valuable resources your way. And for someone watching me right now, it's not just one truck coming your way. It's probably multiple trucks. There is a convoy of God's blessing and supply coming your way in a hard pathway. Joseph would never have dreamt in a million years. Never had men dreamt in a million years that his calling and his destiny would go down the road of a hard pathway. No, sir, Joseph would never have dreamt that the pathway that he would take is one where he was abandoned by his brothers, sold as a slave to Egypt, 
where Potiphar would purchase him as a slave and make him a servant, Joseph wouldn't have dreamt that he would be accused of a crime he didn't commit, to be on the other end of injustice and experience the bitterness and the pain of that. Joseph wouldn't have dreamt that he'd be locked up in prison, forgotten and forsaken about. Come on, you can't tell me that that's an easy pathway. That was Joseph's hard pathway. And 13 years later, 13 years later, the longer became the stronger and the larger was in the longer. 13 long years of hardness and probably questioning and wondering what, what on earth is happening. Maybe God was even silent. Listen, listen. Heaven may be silent, but it's not deaf. God is hearing your prayers. Joseph would never have dreamt that in that hard pathway, watch this, in one moment, in one day, in one instance, Joseph, Pharaoh is asking for you. You better get washed up, cleaned up, shaven, because son, your wardrobe's about to change. Your position's about to change. Joseph, your whole life is about to be revolutionized. And where did that happen? In a hard pathway. The Bible says, as we finish, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. Psalm 114, 8, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of water. I want to pray for you right now. Would you stretch your heart out, extend your hands, and just look to Jesus right now? Because I am absolutely confident that God has your number and he knows your name. He's not oblivious to what's going on. He is sovereign and he's in complete control of our destiny. Yes, it's a hard pathway. Yes, it's difficult and demanding. But I'm here today to tell you that God is a God of supernatural supply and provision of grace and favor and strength and blessing and promise is coming, transporting itself to you on a bitumen road, concrete, a solid surface. The vehicles of God's supply are coming your way. I'm not sure what it is that you're currently experiencing. I'm not sure how difficult it is for you. I'm not sure if it's causing stress upon your marriage. I'm not even clearly sure exactly what the context of your circumstances are. But I am saying His grace, His great grace, is extremely sufficient for you right now. And if you would just center your attention on Him and dig deep now, cause your roots to go down in Him, you'll be surprised the great good that's coming your way and how the Lord Jesus is going to turn this about for you. Can we pray right now? Why don't we do that? Why don't we stretch out to the Lord? I pray, Lord, right now, Holy Spirit, for those right now, for that man sitting down watching right now who feels like he cannot see the light of day, for that wife right now that's concerned about her husband, for that young person who feels like they just don't have a future. For that daughter right now that wonders what the next few days or even the next year will bring. I pray for that person watching right now feels like they're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I pray for them, Father, not to fear because you are with them. I pray for that person, Lord, that has got a seemingly a compass in their hand and all that it's doing is it's spinning and spinning and spinning and can't find the direction they need. Right now, Lord, I pray for the person that's in a place of anguish. I pray for the person, Lord, who's lacking peace. I'm praying for you right now, who feels depleted in confidence. I'm praying for you, whose life might be full of anxiety. 
I'm praying for you that you will understand what Philippians chapter 4 says. To not be anxious for anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding and is not of this earthly origin. Cover your minds and hearts in Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ right now, bless this church. I thank you. Enormous good is coming their way. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're so thankful to Pastor Zoran for preaching for us today. We love his heart and his spirit. And he's got a real connection with Victory Church in particular. I'm so thankful for even his relationship uh, with me on a personal level and his ability to speak into my life. So thanks, Pastor Zoran. Hey, you might be new to church and uh, maybe you've just tuned in today and you're exploring your faith. You're exploring what it means to be a Christian or what it means to even believe in God. And if you're going through that journey, we'd like to do something for you. We have this book here called The God Questions. It answers some of the most common questions which people have about God. Like, how does a good God allow suffering? It's such a fantastic question that so many people have. This book helps explain from a Christian perspective that topic and certain other topics which sometimes confuse people when they're exploring faith. And we'd love to give you this as a free gift. All you need to do is make contact and we'll send it out to you. We won't ask you any questions. We're just happy to connect with you and serve you in that way. Hey, praying you have a great week this week. God bless you. See you again soon.